Welcome back everyone, today we're talking about how to build Voja Jaws of the Conclave. Voja is an extremely powerful commander that can basically win the game with itself and a couple mana dorks. That's all it takes. Anyway, we won't waste any time. Let's get into it. Let's read Voja. So it's a five mana five five with Vigilance, Trample, Ward three. And whenever it attacks, put X plus one plus one counters on each creature you control, where X is the number of elves you control, and then draw a card for each wolf you control. So couple things right off the bat. Having played this a few times and seen a few iterations of this deck, this is an Elves Commander, not a Wolf Commander. The problem becomes is that there's just so much incentive to play Elves that it's hard to get away from them. The Wolves are nice, but they don't give you the killing power that the Elves do, and plus Elves are like one of the strongest tribes in the game, and so there's like a million mana dorks, and basically you can get like most of the effects you ever need in a game of Commander off of an Elf on a creature. So there's just overwhelming incentive to play Elves with this Commander. If you're looking to play Wolves, I would recommend Tovalar instead. I think that's a much better Wolf Commander, as the incentive is fully on Wolves and Werewolves with that deck, so I would steer you in that direction if that's something you're looking to do. But anyway, back to Voja. So like I said, this deck is insanely strong, and one of the things I noticed while putting this video together is that things you would normally associate with a particular card type, like Tribes or plus one plus one counters, you don't really need to run a lot of that stuff because the commander is so strong that it's just not necessary. A card that comes to mind, Doubling Season, for example. Usually a fairly expensive card that goes in plus one, plus one counter decks, or the Ozolith, for example, and you can run them, but they're not necessary because of how strong Voja is. So anyway, this is going to be a more elf-centric build of the deck because that's where this commander does push you. So with that, let's get into it. So first up, let's start with the creatures. We're going to want a lot of mana dorks. You're going to want to jam as many of these as you possibly can into your deck for whatever fits your budget. Uh, in particular, Gyre Sage, Marwyn, and Rishkar all synergize really well with plus one, plus one counters. But make no mistake, the others here are also really good. Run as many of these as you can get your hands on. The particular build that I played of this deck was able to generate like 30 mana around turn six or turn seven. With these cards, this deck has insane mana production. Then, of course, you have your very basic mana dorks. Uh, you'll want some of these, too, and fortunately, most of these are pretty cheap, so they shouldn't be too hard to get a hold of. Moving on from the mana dorks, we see other good elves with some good abilities. Uh, Elvish Warmaster was pretty good in the game that I played with it. Rexage has been a commander staple for a long, long time. Arwen also seems really good because that's more plus one, plus one counters. If Arwen gets bigger off of Voja, anything you bring in after that will also be huge, so really good stuff going on here. Here we see more powerful elves that are going to do really good things for your deck. I would probably run all of these. And by the way, while we're talking about creatures, this is a green deck. So running 30 to 40 creatures is not out of the question for this deck. If you wanted to go really hard and play like 45, maybe 50, you probably could. That's not where I'm super comfortable as a commander player, but because you are in green, you can run very high creature counts and not suffer the consequences of problems associated with running too many creatures. Here we see two elves that have card draw staple to them. You'll definitely want to run both of these. And the card draw is going to be important because we are running a lot of mana dorks. Under normal circumstances, mana dorks are usually pretty good at the beginning of the game, but their effectiveness kind of tapers off as the game goes longer. Now with Voja, Voja will pump them up and make them bigger, so they will be valid attackers, which is still good. But the one issue with mana dorks is that they will deplete your hand very quickly. So we are going to want to have a lot of card draw sources in this deck. And these are two really good ones to start, and we'll talk about some others afterwards. Another thing that works really well with this deck is Changelings. You don't need to run these, but they are very, very impactful. Mirror Entity in particular gives your creatures all creature types, which means you can get both the Wolf Synergy and the Elf Synergy off of Voja, and that's a really powerful effect because that means your team is going to be huge and you're going to refill your hand. You don't need to go wild with the changelings, but these are probably the best ones. Oh, and I almost forgot, Chameleon Colossus is another really powerful changeling that I would definitely run. But overall, I would try to stick to the changelings that have really good abilities. I wouldn't get too carried away here, because we do have some other ways in the deck to give ourselves all creature types. And that's going to be these cards. So Maskwood Nexus is insane in this deck. I've seen people not running it because, quote unquote, it's not necessary. Uh, in the game that I played, Maskwood Nexus drew me so many cards that even when a board wipe went off, I just didn't care because I had a completely full hand. 
And I think I was running zero wolves in my deck and maybe two or three changelings. So uh, Maskwood Nexus is extremely powerful. Shields of Velus Vel is going to do the same thing on a one mana instant. I would definitely run that. Blades of Velus Vel, I could go either way on. If you're wanting another cheap card draw effect in the deck, it's going to be nice for that. It'll give you a nice draw too. But it isn't going to be as powerful as the other two cards on this page, which I would definitely run. Next up, we see some fun enchantments. Tribute to the World Tree was really powerful in the game that I played. It synergizes really well with Marwyn, Gyre Sage, and Rishkar. And when you cast your commander, your commander is going to get you some card draw. So I really like what Tribute of the World Tree was doing in that game. Uh, Ranger class isn't entirely necessary, but it is just fun. It does make you a wolf so that you can easily get some card draw going. I like that it's an enchantment that makes a wolf because it's going to be more durable than something that's just going to get cleaned up by a Blasphemous Act. And with the mana this deck generates, it shouldn't be too hard to get to level 3, and that's a nice little card advantage engine. So again, and I'll say this a lot throughout this video, it's not entirely necessary, but it's fun, and if you want to run it, have at it. Next up is something that is going to be very important to this deck, and that is protection effects. Basically, this deck can operate on Mana Dorks, Voja, and Protection Effects. Like, if that's the only things you run in this deck, you'll probably still win a ton, a ton of games. So I would not be shy with these. I would run at least four or five of them. There are many in white, so pick the ones that suit you best. I know Teferi's and Clever Concealment aren't always the cheapest cards, but there are many, many other options out there. I haven't even included a lot of the Boros ones. Boros Charm, Legion's Initiative are also really nice. Uh, but the one thing with this deck is that the mana colors do get a little wonky, so you want to be careful of, like, double pips and stuff like that with this deck. And that brings us to our mana ramp. So, even though we're going to be running a ton of mana dorks, I would still run some number of puts a land into play type of ramp, just because if a board wipe does go off, you don't want to lose everything that you have. And that brings us to our lands. So one of the things I noticed with this deck is because we're running so many mana dorks and so many elves, you're going to want almost every land in your deck to produce green. It's okay to have a few that don't. It doesn't need to be every land. But I would say probably at least two-thirds to three-quarters of your lands, maybe more, should produce green mana. So there are a ton of options here. But when you're selecting your dual lands, I would make sure that most of them make green. Uh, and one more thing I wanted to point out with the lands is with Maskwood Nexus or any of the changeling effects, it is possible to draw a lot of cards, so I might consider running a Reliquary Tower, even though it's going to be awkward color-wise. And beyond that, there's one other thing that I noticed with the deck, is that because we're so heavily in green, you're going to want to keep your basic land count for plains and mountains very low. I probably wouldn't go over two of each, so that I could pull them out with Cultivate and things like that. Because we do want to have that green mana on turn one for the Mana Dorks, turn two, and be really consistent about it. So I just wanted to caution you so you don't get stuck on mana colors by running too many of these when you have a handful of, like, almost all green cards. That brings us into card draw. So we started talking about card draw a little bit with the creatures. Here's some spell and permanent-based options that are all really good. I do like Guardian Project and Great Henge for the cast a creature, draw a card type effect because this will be a high creature count deck with a lot of cheap elves. We can get a lot going with that. But I also did notice in my piloting that I really wanted to harmonize because if I cast a Mana Dork on one and another Elf on two, my hand's already starting to get pretty thin and I just need a few extra cards. And as good as Guardian Project and Great Henge are, they do take some setup and some timing to get them right. And they are prone to removal. So, so yeah, I did find myself wanting Harmonize and other effects like it. Shamanic Revelation is going to be really good. And then... These will be more for the late game, but Rishkar's Expertise and Return of the Wild Speaker are going to be really good once Voja starts pumping up your team. They're going to be kind of weak before that, so you may not want to run tons of these, maybe one or two of them, to kind of get that, like, game-ending amounts of card draw, where you just have, like, 30 cards in hand. But in general, you're going to want a nice mixture of all the different types of card draw available to you based on whatever situations you run into. And in my list, I actually ran Showdown of the Scalds and Ignite the Future because I wanted more of those harmonized type effects. And I wouldn't fault you for doing the same. Just be careful of the mana colors, particularly with Showdown. So as we talked a little bit about earlier, this is a plus one, plus one counters deck. There are plus one, plus one counter synergy cards like Doubling Season, like Hardened Scales, like the Ozolith. And these cards are great, but completely not necessary for this deck. Voja is so strong that... You can choose to run these if you want to, but it's not a requirement. 
Honestly, I don't know that I've ever encountered a commander that's so strong that it doesn't even need to use the effects that synergize with its ability. I don't know that that's really come up for me very often in the many years that I've been doing commander content. Moving on from that, next we see some haste enablers. You're gonna want some haste in this deck. I would say start with four sources of haste. Rhythm of the Wild, Rising of the Day, both gonna be great. If you wanted a fervor also, Hammer of Perforos, wouldn't say no. Hammer, be careful about the mana colors, but definitely fervor. I'm not a big fan of Concordant Crossroads or Mass Hysteria. Those can give the game and they can take the game. Uh, if you're going to use them, have a very clear plan about what you're doing. But in general, I would probably start with these four first and then look into other options as necessary. Because Voja with Haste will be able to get that big attack in right away. Opponents won't really be able to respond to it all that well, particularly with the Ward 3, which we haven't even talked about yet. It just makes Voja insane and it's really hard to kill it with spot removal. But also, there's a ton of Mana Dorks in this deck. Mana Dorks coming down with Haste, particularly multi-producing Mana Dorks, is a great way to generate near infinite amounts of mana. So you can have some absolutely wild turns. Don't be afraid to add a bunch of haste into the deck. Next, that brings us to finishers. So once again, you wouldn't even technically need to run these, but let's say you had like four or five mana dorks in play, you cast Voja, you attack. That'll be a lot of damage to one player, but it's not necessarily gonna kill all of them straight away, right then and there, whereas, if you throw an Overwhelming Stampede on there, it probably will. You might be able to kill the table or at least two players and then, you know, get the two that are furthest ahead and then you can kind of go head to head with the person who's fallen behind, right? So any of the classic green overrun effects are going to be very powerful for what we're doing. But I am a Boros guy, so you could also consider some of the Boros finishers. Aggravated Assault is good because this deck makes tons of mana. Waves of Aggression is good because it can just live in the graveyard if it gets milled or wheeled or whatever the case. Karlak is nice because you can tutor it out of the deck. There are a million tutors in this deck. Uh, Wolfgar, also nice. Not quite a double combat, but it does trigger the ability a second time, and that will make your stuff really, really big. So all of these are nice. You don't need to go wild here. With the extra combats, maybe two of them is probably about right for this deck. Uh, if you're running a million tutors, which you can do in green, you may only need one. You may only need a Karlak or... I did have Aurelia in my list, but I noted that the red, red, white, white is very difficult to cast with this deck, where if you're using like a Court of the Calling or a Finale of Devastation, that's probably how you're going to go and get Aurelia. Uh, I find that Karlak is just an easier thing to cast and you can do kind of all the same stuff with it anyway. So like I said, I would probably pick maybe two of these. And then as I started talking about, there are a million tutors in green. So, so many. Some are budget friendly, some aren't. Notably, Rocco is also an elf and a tutor, so it probably makes a lot of sense to run that one, and I haven't looked, but I assume they're pretty cheap. And so the big thing with the number of tutors is that more tutors will generally make your deck stronger and more consistent. That will, however, make it do the same thing every single time, and if you're not playing competitive commander, I do think that that can be a detriment. I don't play mono black anymore because I noticed my play patterns were exactly the same like every time I played mono black. So just have that conversation with yourself about how many tutors you want to run. Two or three is a nice medium ground. Uh, I looked at a list online that had like six, and that was very much a crater hoof as fast as you can kind of deck. And that's certainly a thing that you can do. Uh, these two will end the game for you. I don't find them particularly interesting. But if you're trying to win the game as fast as possible, that's probably going to be a pretty good option. But a way more interesting way to win the game than Crater Hoof is All Will Be One or Shalai and Halar, which whenever you put plus one plus one counters on creatures you control, you can just do direct damage to your opponents. So with this, you basically attack with Voja, and it doesn't even matter if the attack's gonna get through because you'll be putting so many counters on things, you can probably kill at least a player if not more with either of these effects going off. Next, we see some other classic green finishers. Champion of Lamholt, gonna be really good with plus one, plus one counters. Things will become unblockable very quickly. Uh, Nylea, putting trample on all your big stuff, gonna be great. And both are easily tutorable with all of the tutors in green. So both of these are great, easy options that you probably already have in your collection if you've been playing green for some period of time. Here's some more of the Boros type finishers that you can choose to run for this deck. It's not entirely necessary but they do give you different levels of utility than just trying to overrun your opponents. So Bond of Discipline in particular, removing the blockers and gaining a ton of life makes it really hard for someone to kill you on the way back. If you cast in a Chroma's Will, at least one player is dying, if not the rest of the table. 
Uh, Winds of Abandon is a little more tricky, but it doubles as a removal spell and as a finisher if you're trying to remove all the blockers. But you do have to be careful about giving them a lot of lands. Master Warcraft is a very cheap option that can do some interesting things. It's not the first one that I would go for on the list, but it is super budget friendly. And again, with finishers, you don't need to go wild here. Three, maybe four is as many as you're going to need. Maybe less if you're using a lot of tutors. What I personally would probably do is pick one from each of these pages. I would pick a Chroma's Will because a Chroma's Will has a ton of utility. I like the evasion from these two. I would pick one to two extra combats depending on how I'm feeling that day. And then I would also pick one to two overrun cards. If you're running Crater Hoof and Moonshaker with a bunch of tutor effects, you probably don't need to run the spell-based overruns. But again, three to four finishers is going to be all you need with this deck. And any of these cards can allow you to end the game very, very quickly. Moving on from that, let's talk about some fun stuff. So I did say this is going to be an elf-centric build of the deck, but there are some cool wolf cards that we can jam in here, not necessarily trying to be wolf tribal, but just that so we can get a little synergy going and have a little fun in the process. So we're just going to call this the fun stuff section. There are three Arlen Planeswalkers, and they all make wolves in some capacity, so if you like having that threat diversity and value engine of having a Planeswalker in play, having any or all of these Arlens is going to be a pretty good time. Next, we have the Tulsimir cycle, all of which make a Voja token. Again, completely not necessary to run in the deck, but if you like flavor and you want all the Vojas you can possibly get, you may want to look into running some of these. Here's some fun enchantments that, again, you don't need to run them, but you can have a good time with them if you do. Have I lost to Miles Arya? Yeah, twice. And it's definitely within the realm of possibility with this deck because your stuff gets huge. Feed the Pack and Howling Moon both have wolf synergies, so they can be nice if you do have some number of wolves in the deck. Uncivil Unrest actually does look really powerful. It's not that you need to run it, but your deck's probably going to get a lot better if you do, because if Voja's coming in with haste, and then everything gets pumped up and is doing double damage, uh, the table's probably dying. So Uncivil Unrest seems insane for this deck. From what I've been hearing, it's insane in many, many places, but definitely a fun one worth checking out for this particular deck. And then we see some other wolf-centric cards if you do want to run some wolves. These are some of the better ones that I saw because many of the wolves that have been printed can be fairly underwhelming in their abilities. And Aura, giving your commander indestructible, is going to be a really nice one. So anyway, yeah. That's how I would build Voja. Again, you can build this deck with basically mana dorks, a bunch of protection spells, and like one or two finishers, and that can be your whole deck, which means if you have a friend that's new to the game and looking to try to get into it, maybe build something on a budget, this is going to be a pretty good starter deck because it's powerful, it's not overly complicated to play, and you should be able to make a budget version of it that's still really strong. Anyway, let me know if I missed any cool cards that you would add to your Voja deck, and as always, thank you for watching.